It's cold here. It's lonely in this crowded line. So dark I'm numb to any space or time. I can't identify which way is up. I need to escape. So I removed the knife that I inserted into my own back like Jesus looked into a mirror and saw Judas staring back. No equal is your equal, never say I ain't told ya. Nah, in a land where hurt people hurt more people, fuck calling it culture. <laughs> What's up? I remember one time I was on my way to pick my daughter up from school. This was a couple years ago. This was just a couple years ago. I was on my way picking my uh, to pick my daughter up from school, and I was overcome with this feeling of no longer wanting to feel. I can't recall what actually set that that into motion or what made what made me start feeling that way. I don't think there was any one thing in particular. I think it may have been a culmination of of emotions and and just life circumstances bottled up. And I remember feeling like this was it. Like I didn't want to do this anymore. And it was scary because there was no like real fear of anything there was no real and i've never really told anybody this i've never really you know acknowledged this out loud to anyone um if you if you've read my book um heavy is the head you probably noticed a little something in there uh, because i've written about it and that's actually what helped me get up out of it my daughter literally saved my life and this isn't the first of my children that have done that my my oldest son has saved my life all of my all of my kids have saved my life at one point or another but this particular time, my daughter saved my life. All right, what was your question? Uh, you said I got to do what now? So I got to and I don't want to be late. I'm with you. Do, I'm wait a minute, you said do grown ups still do what? Who showed you that? I don't know. Where did you get that from? Which one of your little friends do, did that? Because I sat in that line, that pickup line, parents know, that long pickup line, waiting for your kids to get out of school. And if you're not there early, you're late. And if you're late, forget it. You're at the back of the line. So I was I was sitting in that line and I was just going through this, this roller coaster of emotions. Most of it was just most of it was just a feeling of being numb. I didn't I didn't feel anything. I just felt like I was just done. And like I said, I've never really told anybody this. But I can relate to a lot of what people have said when they've sort of, you know, when they've opened up in sessions that we had with um with the initiative we had with the with the Air Force when we were doing um stronger together and people acknowledge that you know they've been in that dark place to the point where some have uh, attempted to end their own life. And I never judge those people because you know what I understand. Like I, I empathize. When I say I understand, I'm not when I say I've been in that dark place, I'm not just saying that. Like it's not lip service. I get it. They always say what the signs are. Look for this, look for that. But to be honest, how many of you guys would ever think that I would be have been in that place? Just be honest. Like how many of how many people would have thought that that was me? What if Rob Naylor Jr. killed himself? I've thought about that before. Like what would people say about me? Like, what will people say? Oh, I didn't know he was like, I didn't know he was going through that. I, did, I thought he was happy. I thought everything was good with him. What if? See, people go through things, man. 
people go through things and this is not i'm not trying to be somber and bring the energy in the mood down i'm not i promise but it's just it's just something we should think about and be a little bit more proactive instead of reactive because as people sometimes we just suck let's be honest myself included when it comes to that golden rule treating people like we want to be treated when it comes to treating people as human we just lose humanity sometimes. We lose our sense of humanity. And that sucks. And so my daughter saved my life. Because while I was in that that um that trance of of no longer wanting to feel anything, as soon as she came out of that building, I snapped out of it. I regained my motivation and desire to live. This is just for us to understand that people go through things. I got a, I have a friend, a lifelong brother now. I sent him a text message. And in that moment, that text message went through to his phone. He was he had his finger on the trigger sitting in his car. He had his finger on the trigger, ready to end it. Ready to no longer feel. But that text message. Literally saved his life. And I had no idea. It's just the way the universe works, I guess. It wasn't his time to go. And that's not the that's not the big up myself. That's really just to put a, a spotlight on the fact that, hey, man, contact your people. Talk, talk to your people. Check on your people. You never know. You never know what people are going through. You never know. What about celebrities? Are they people? I read a dope article written by a friend of mine, and I'm I'm not saying it's dope because he's my friend. It's it's seriously a great piece. And it's entitled. What if Will Smith killed himself? And so we always on joke time. It's always jokey, jokey on social media. Right. Something happens to somebody and we just think it's hilarious, especially with celebrities, because for some reason we think they're not human. But what if Will Smith had killed himself? I guarantee the conversation would have been different. And then people would have been wondering, you know, what could we have done differently? Should we have not made such a big deal, you know, joked on him so hard? A whole reactionary thing. Why can't we take that same energy and be preemptive about it? You know, something happens in a celebrity's life and we just and we show some empathy and sympathy towards them instead of joking about them and making it worse. I see the error in my ways. I've done it. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. It's the culture we live in. Right. We have to do better is what I'm saying. And so I say all that to say. I really want to shine some light on this article because it, it it brought up some thoughts that I had been thinking, but I thought that people would probably look at me like, because I've even heard it before. People would be like, oh man, you reaching. Oh man, that's, that's not the same. Like kind of scoffing at it, right? But these are real, real thoughts that we need to think about. And shout out to my man, Stefan Irizarry for, for highlighting that. And I want to I wanna give him credit. I'm not going to show the entire article because I want you guys to actually go read it. And I want to give Men's League and, and Aerie, all of them, their, their likes, clicks, and all of that. They, I want to give them their flowers for doing such a great job, is what I'm saying. And so I'm just going to highlight a couple of pieces that really stood out to me that I feel like um, need to be be pointed out. So boom, this is just a uh, PDF version of it. Um, I saved it. I didn't want to actually put the, but I'll put the, I'll put the link on this video. Okay, so you see it there. What if Will Smith killed himself by Stefan Irizarry? And if you can't pronounce his last name, don't worry about it. It took me a lot of practice. And that's my guy. All right. So shout out to Men's League. Shout out to Stefan for this. Um, so, like I said, well written. Um, and I'm going to have him on an episode, a future episode, and we'll get we'll delve a little bit deeper into it. He put a lot of effort into this. And I want you guys, like I said, I want you guys to go check it out. But basically, let's have, let's look at a couple of pieces here. Um, the incident at the at the Oscars left us with a lot to unpack. 
My initial reaction was disappointment. I grew up with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, as many of us did. When his fame began to rise, I, fi I finally had a successful male figure in the media that I would have wanted as my big brother. And let's talk about that for a second. So first of all, let's talk about all the people that want to be the first to break the news, the first to talk about it and all of that stuff. How about we start allowing the smoke to clear before we um, jump on things like that? Because what happens is because Will Smith was at the apex of, you know, the good guy, the safe. You know, y'all know where I'm going with that. Um, but how many of our um, especially black men? Do they build up to break them down? And I'm going to segue a little bit off of this off of this um, article for a second, because that he's, he's speaking to something that Kendrick Lamar just highlighted in his, his new video that he dropped. Right. Kendrick Lamar just highlighted in his new video. And if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you go check it out. But it's for the heart part five. And might I say, it's about time Kendrick uh, dropped again. I, I've been waiting because he's a true artist in my eyes, a true artist in my eyes. And I love everything that he puts out. This right here just took the cake. But you'll see Will Smith is I'm not going to give it away. Go watch it. If you haven't seen it, you know what I mean? But if you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, he encapsulated the goodness available among figures in hip hop when every adult in my world assured me that baggy jeans and backwards hats were synonymous with drugs and violence. Jokes on them. Skinny jeans are for drugs and violence now. So a lot of us can identify with this next sentiment. He said, I was mad at him for becoming real, fallible, imperfect human while having the audacity to stay in his tuxedo for the rest of the night. So, again, we. When he says, I was mad at him for becoming a real, fallible, imperfect human. How many of us expect these celebrities to walk on water? Or how many of us think that when they mess up, it's time for us to pile on? That's what we do. We pile on. Not realizing that these people are real people. Right? Right? The flawed perspective of looking at and analyzing Will as an outsider would get me nowhere. See, he shout out to Steph for uh, Stephen for for acknowledging that. Right. Because we 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 judge these people. Notice I said people. We judge these people. And for what? And it's as if we are infallible. Like we haven't been there. Like we can not identify. Imagine if the the if the cameras were on you imagine all of the things you've done wrong just imagine it for a second how would you feel if people piled on how would you feel if people made you feel even worse about how you felt at your worst how would you feel you, you don't have to answer me. Just answer it, answer it to yourself. All right. So. I'm going to start back from the, the flawed perspective of looking at and analyzing will as an outsider would get me nowhere. It has been a maxim I have lived by to never underestimate how human humans can be. His puzzling conduct left me to face the awful truth that I felt that kind of rage that I felt that kind of rage before. You have too. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> if not, you may be ignoring pieces of yourself that you'd better get to know before they jump to, to greet others on your behalf. And that's powerful, man, because that, that that's telling us acknowledge acknowledge that you are flawed, too. See, we have this thing where we, when we see a celebrity mess up, we, we act like we are just so perfect. We never did that. I know y'all go in the shade room and just judge everybody and act like you, you haven't um, messed up today. We all do. And then he gives examples. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you know, you can identify. See, a lot of y'all act like y'all want to slap Chris Rock. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's right that he did it. 
but but put yourself in a situation where you were unable to contain your emotions when you lashed out and then you had to go back and apologize and say hey that wasn't me. i was just i just wasn't myself it just took me there right it just took me there cuz we don't we don't know what will have been going through prior to leading up to that and i'm not making excuses for the man notice i said the man the person but let's not act like we haven't done things beyond that that we have uh like our anger and all that stuff has led us to step outside of ourselves as some people say jump out of character what Erie is doing here what uh stefan is doing he's forcing us to take a look in the mirror what i would say all the time therapy and this is what a therapy session so let's take a moment to look in the mirror and acknowledge that you have been Will Smith before. Some of y'all probably been Chris Rock before. You know? And so what we have to understand is we're all human, even celebrities. You saw what happened to that man. Uh, Mike Tyson had to, had to rough up a little bit on the airplane. I might have a different discussion about that, though. Because I think it's ludicrous how celebrities specifically athletes are relegated to less than human the officials i think they're going to call this game off and that should be the, the outcome is definitely decided you have these ridiculous fans trying to go at the players and now throwing somebody could really get hurt but we'll talk about that another day right now we're talking about what if will smith killed himself if will smith were to kill himself will we say that that was a worthy outcome or will we regret our willful ignorance to the signs in front of us? Chances are we will understand the signs. Maybe then we would better comprehend the effect of Jada having emasculated him in front of the world during Red Table Talk in 2020. Maybe we, have, we would embrace his memory as a man and as a human instead of turning his tearful eyes into a meme. And I'm going to stop right there because that's, that's powerful right there. Like, think about that. And that's what I talk. That's what I mean when I say not to be reactionary, because if we because the reactionary culture that we live in has cultivated a culture of just doing that. We turn everything into a meme. When people cry, we turn it into a meme. When people are sad, we turn it into a meme. When people are hurting, we turn it into a meme. But what happens if Will Smith had killed himself? Would it be funny? I want us to all treat each other better. I want us to all be more proactive instead of reactionary when it comes to how we deal with one another. I want us to stop allowing society to cultivate a culture of only giving flowers when we're putting them on caskets, because at that point it's a little too late, right? I want us to treat one another with the same respect that we want to be treated with. And I know that sounds corny to some people, but come on, man, like at the end of the day, we got to stop doing the crying after the fact. I'm not saying not to cry after the fact, but let's not contribute to the demise and then cry afterwards. Let's not contribute to the demise and then allow tears to fall from our eyes. Let's get it in line before it gets to that point in time. Let's, let's do better, man. I just want us to do better. And with that said, as always, no bad energy. And if you haven't done so yet, Find somebody that you have, um, I don't want to say beef, because beef, they say beef is in the streets. But I want you to find somebody who you have an issue with, someone who you're not seeing eye to eye with, even yourself. Because there's been times where I don't see eye to eye with myself, but you know what? That's why I say I got to uh, restore balance within myself. Find somebody that you, that you need to restore balance with and do that. Get on the phone and call them, shoot them a text, whatever you need to do, just make it right. Today, don't 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 waste time. Don't be reactive. Be proactive. Love y'all. Peace.